Hey everybody, Eric Schweitzer here at D23. We're here at the Epic Mickey Rebrush booth with a man who needs no introduction, the legendary game designer Warren Spector. How are you, Warren? And I'm here with Jason Malley, game director of the game. How are you, Jason? I'm super good. This is just an awesome experience for me, yeah. Doing great. Loving being here at D23, I'll tell you. Yeah, I'm having a lot of fun too. Um, so, Epic Mickey, this is the the remaster, the remake, but you directed the game many years ago. What, what was it that attracted you to doing a Mickey Mouse game? I think it's fair to say it's not the typical kind of game that you make. No, everybody was surprised when I said I wanted to make a Mickey Mouse game, except my mother, who when I told her I was working with Disney, she didn't say congratulations, she didn't say, are you crazy? She said, it's about time. <laughs> uh, I've been a Mickey fan since I was a little kid. Like there's a, it's a picture of me uh, wearing mouse ears on my mother's lap when I was one year old. So I go back a ways with Disney. And when Disney asked me, I mean, talk about flattering, they asked me if I was interested in making a Mickey Mouse game. I, I mean, who says no to working with the most recognizable icon on planet Earth? Yeah. So I, I was in. This is one of those games that people have been begging for a remake for so long. Can you talk about how this came to be? Yeah, so um, from what I'm aware of, you know, like THQ and uh, and Purple Lamp, the studio that I work for, uh, you know, we were starting to make a name for ourselves with 3D platformers. Um, and obviously this is one of the most iconic 3D platformers as well as many other genres that it covers. Um, and yeah, I think that uh, in the conversations with Disney and THQ, this kind of emerged and everyone wanted it and everyone wanted it to, to come soon. Yeah. yeah. Can you talk about some of the things that you love most about this game? Yeah, so I mean... <laughs> There's a lot. Yeah. Uh, and in the original game, you know, some of the main things that I loved were just the... I always say that game developers have this wonderful ability to uh, embody the spirit of the thing they're working on. And obviously, Disney is something that is, a, is full of spirit and full of character. Um, and the original game did that beautifully. Uh, and within the first few months of us working on this project too, you could see with all of the team and all the developers at Purple Lamp that we really started to feel the same thing again. You know, over 10 years later, um, and after talking with Warren quite a bit about it too, it really feels like we, we have the same emotions as we're making this. Um, and it's just, yeah, it's just absolutely magical to be working on these things. Well, it, it's a game that means so much to a lot of people, and uh, a lot of people that grew up with the game, now they're at an age where they're grown. What, what do people say to you when they come up to you and talk to you about the game? Well, I, I get a couple of things, and they're all really gratifying. One is uh, people telling me how much the game meant to them uh, personally and emotionally, which was one of the things I really wanted to do. I wanted to show people that you could make a game that could, could touch the heart and not just get an adrenaline rush going. You know, so I've now started to have people come up to me at this event and give me gifts and ask me to sign things and want to give me a hug and just thank me for bringing this game that means so much to them back again yeah. and in a way where they're so happy to play it again because it's like a brand new experience. Uh, and I think enough people have told me that it touched them emotionally that I think we did a pretty good job. The other thing that is killing me here in the best possible way is how many people have come up to me and said, I played this game when I was a kid and now I'm playing it with my kid. Yeah. Yesterday before we were closing I got given a gift by a by a, a fan in a, a wheelchair and he was just he was just telling me how I made him feel or we made him feel uh, like a child again. Um, and you know it, it just I just want to sob my heart out. That's that's the Disney magic in a nutshell, you know, I mean making games uh, and movies and books uh, that that last, you know, forever. And uh, I, I'm happy to see that this game has some of that kind of life and magic. Yeah, yeah, it must be so cool to be a part of that. When you, when you look back, what are the things you're most proud of about this game? Well, I'm most proud of the fact uh, that we brought Oswald back. Yeah. You know, Bob Iger got uh, the rights to Oswald the Lucky Rabbit, Walt's first cartoon star, uh, for this game, which I think says something about how Disney uh, feels about games in general, which is pretty cool. Um, but bringing that little guy back after, you know, 80 years of, uh, of being out of the public eye, uh, and, you know, every time the, the in the intro, the little door opens and Oswald sticks his head yeah. around the corner. Like, I, I genuinely tear up when I see that because he, he's back and he deserves all the attention he gets. Yeah. So I'm, re I, I'm really proud of that. That's probably my, my greatest memory. 
Can you also talk about some of the things you've added to the original game? Yeah, so uh, I never liked the term added, even okay. though we did add some stuff. So in the in the uh, at Purple Lamp, we always liked to use the word complement. Um, so we actually built the entire game from scratch with the original assets once, wow. um, and then we went back and we built it again with all of the new assets. Um, and as we did that with the new assets, we started to ask ourselves, okay, so how can we complement the original? So how do we, now that the game's running in 60 FPS, for example, we wanted to add an ability like the sprint to Mickey, so that Mickey's also in 60 FPS. Um, and you know, it just means that we're big in the speedrunning community with the SpongeBob games at Purple Lamb, yeah. um, and we really wanted to make sure those players are also catered for, but anyone that wants to take the game at their own pace, the, you know, the entire original game and spirit is still there and underneath. Um, and yeah, so the game's playable in 4K and 60 FPS for the first time on modern platforms. Um, I maybe stealth announced accidentally <laughs> at the panel on Friday that uh, we added an interior to the cinema in Mean Street as well. So that wasn't in the original game. And what you can do in there is you can replay all the projector levels that you've missed uh, maybe. Oh. We also added an extra film reel to every single side-scrolling level. So now there's two collectibles in each one. It, even more important to allow players to replay them. Um, and we actually have over three times as many concept art pieces to collect in the game. So over 150 concept arts to find. Um, and I was really proud that in the game as well, when you find them, we can credit all of our concept artists because these guys did so much of the work in the early stages. We worked really closely with Disney Games and getting the feedback and with Warren and Rolf Moore as well, one of the original concept artists. Like We really worked closely with all of these original developers to make sure that we, we really did this justice. Um, and I think it just came out yeah. incredibly. It sounds like a, an even more substantial compliment than your some of the previous remakes like SpongeBob. Was there a reason you wanted to do go kind of above and beyond with this one? So I think, you know, the original game was only on the Wii. Uh, and so the, that came with some hardware limitations. Uh, and the original, the pitch for us always started with, uh, you know, that we were going to fix the mostly hardware-based limitations. No slide on the Wii. It was a fantastic game, and it was just right for that platform. But as soon as you come to all modern platforms like we are, uh, we need to start thinking about a different way to play the game. And we kept the motion controls in on the Wii and on the PS5. Um, so you can still play the game similarly to the original, uh, but now you have a full orbital camera and the game is fully playable with twin stick controls, which is much more common nowadays. Um, and a lot of players will be more familiar with it, and returning players, it will feel completely new as well. Uh, wow, thanks so much. It's, it's great to see you, and I'm excited to play Epic Mickey again. Well, thanks. I'm excited for you to play it, too. <laughs> uh, so the game comes out on September 24th, so I think just five or six weeks yeah. away. Um, if you pre-order on any of the console platforms, you get one day early access, so that's on the 23rd. Uh, and also, any pre-order will get three Mickey costumes that were from the second game. Game, um, and then you'll be able to, to dress Mickey up and, and play as your favorite characters. Speaking of the second game, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm up for it, so <laughs> let's see what happens. Cool. Thanks so much, Jason. Stay tuned for more D23.